Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve into The Comfort Crisis by Michael Easter, a compelling narrative that emerged in 2021. This book serves as a timely antidote to the myriad of physical and mental health challenges festering in the heart of modern day life. Easter's central thesis posits that true progress and well being lie in embracing discomfort, a concept as broad as enduring the harshness of the wilderness or as introspective as meditating on the nature of mortality. Michael Easter brings a unique blend of expertise and personal insight to the table. As an award-winning writer and editor for Men's Health magazine and a seasoned journalism teacher at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, Easter channels his extensive experience into The Comfort Crisis, marking his debut in the literary world. The Comfort Crisis is an essential read for a diverse audience. Whether you are feeling disillusioned with the conveniences and trappings of modern life, yearning for an adventure akin to an into-the-wild experience, or simply seeking ways to bolster your physical or mental health, this book promises to be a revelation. Join us as we explore how stepping outside of our comfort zones can lead to profound personal growth and an unparalleled sense of fulfillment. The Comfort Crisis. Embrace discomfort to reclaim your wild, happy, healthy self. Introduction. Step into the wild. The quest for true contentment. Imagine fulfilling every desire for comfort at the touch of a button. A warm blanket. Your favorite show streaming instantly. Or the perfect temperature at all times. It sounds ideal, doesn't it? Yet, Buried beneath layers of convenience and ease, many of us sense something essential is missing. This realization struck the author hard, prompting an extraordinary journey far beyond his comfort zone. He ventured into the Alaskan wilderness for a month of caribou hunting and traveled to Bhutan to ponder deeply on life's ephemeral nature. These experiences led him to a powerful insight. Embracing physical and mental challenges is not only rewarding, but could also be the key to genuine happiness. As you embark on this narrative journey, you'll uncover some remarkable truths. First, imagine isolating yourself from the modern world, surrendering all its conveniences and stepping into the untamed wilderness. Even a short stint of three days surrounded by nature's raw beauty and challenges can profoundly change your perspective on life. Nature forces us out of our meticulously curated comfort zones and confronts us with the reality of our physical and emotional limits, urging a deeper connection with the essence of who we are. Then, consider the dietary and physical habits of our distant ancestors. They didn't feast on processed foods or sit for hours on end in front of screens. Their survival depended on eating what they could hunt or gather and being constantly on the move. This lifestyle, dictated by necessity, ensured they remained at the peak of health. In a time when lifestyle diseases plague society, revisiting these ancient practices might just hold the secret to a better, more vibrant life. Lastly, unfold the mystery behind Bhutan's remarkable happiness. In a country where contemplation on mortality is deeply ingrained in the culture, you'd expect a somber outlook on life. However, the truth is startlingly different. By continuously acknowledging the impermanence of life, the Bhutanese foster an acute appreciation for the present moment, nurturing a deep-seated joy and satisfaction that eludes many in the so-called developed world. As this narrative unwraps, it becomes clear that stepping out of our comfort zones and embracing difficulty may well pave the path to true happiness. Through the lens of these experiences, we are invited to reassess our own lives and consider whether the comfort we so eagerly seek might actually be the very thing holding us back from experiencing life's full richness and depth. Part 1. The Paradox of Comfort. Seeking Happiness Beyond the Sofa. Picture this. Waking up on an incredibly soft mattress, driving to an office with ergonomic seating, 
and spending every possible moment in a bubble of modern conveniences. This was the author's life, a cocoon of comfort fashioned out of hard work and overcoming personal demons. Yet amidst this sea of plush cushions and endless entertainment, he found himself pondering a radical idea. What if he stripped away all these layers of comfort? Would the essence of happiness emerge from the absence of easiness? Here lies a modern conundrum. Our lives are more comfortable than ever, but are they truly more fulfilling? Let's travel back in time for a moment. For millennia, human existence was a ceaseless skirmish with nature, an ongoing struggle to find food, shelter, and safety. Fast forward to today, and the average person lives a life of unparalleled ease, with basic needs met without a second thought. But has this shift toward comfort brought us closer to happiness? Surprisingly, the answer might be no. It's an ironic twist of fate that, in our age of comfort, many find themselves trapped in a cycle of stress, depression, and discontent. The physical demands of survival have morphed into mental battles, anxiety spikes, occupational burnout looms large, and attempts to escape through food, alcohol, or screens often leave us feeling more detached from joy rather than immersed in it. The craving for comfort is deeply ingrained in our being, yet it's beginning to seem as if our primordial selves, those who thrived on the unpredictability and rawness of life, were onto something. Anthropologists have ventured to suggest that our ancestors, living in a world devoid of today's comforts, might have actually been happier. They possessed simplicity in their desires and lived each moment with an instinctive mindfulness that modern distractions seldom allow. Motivated by a desire to rediscover this raw, unfettered way of living, the author embarked on a challenge that would take him miles away from his comfortable existence. A month-long hunting expedition in the untamed wilderness of Arctic Alaska. Swapping a soft bed for a tent on the frozen ground, he set out to strip away the trappings of modern life in search of something more profound. The journey was nothing short of transformative. Just days into the trip, the author began to experience a profound sense of calm, improved physical fitness, and a deeper connection to the natural world than he had ever felt before. Though a wild expedition in Arctic Alaska might not be everyone's chosen method of escape, the author's story serves as a powerful testament to the potential for personal transformation that lies in embracing discomfort. As we'll see, Stepping out of our comfort zones doesn't always require drastic measures. Sometimes the smallest adjustments can lead us toward a more fulfilling, happier existence. Part 2. Embracing Challenge. The Pathway to Mental Fortitude. Consider the traditional walkabout, a profound journey undertaken by young Aboriginal Australians. For half a year, they traverse the harsh outback, facing scorching heat, scarce food, and the lurking danger of the world's deadliest snakes. This rite of passage is a testament to the transformative power of embracing extreme physical and mental challenges, leading to a heightened sense of identity and resilience. Around the globe, various cultures incorporate similar rites of passage, recognizing that navigating through such intense experiences equips the youth with unparalleled strength and mental clarity. This stands in stark contrast to a trend observed in many parts of modern society, particularly in the United States, where overprotective parenting styles have evolved from helicopter to snowplow, with parents zealously clearing any obstacle that might challenge their children. Herein lies a vital insight. Physical challenges and novel experiences are integral to our mental and emotional well being. This concept is supported by the toughening theory which finds its roots in research conducted by the University of Buffalo. Scientists delved into the lives of Americans from varied backgrounds, inquiring about the stressors they had confronted, such as grave illness or the loss of loved ones. Upon analyzing the participants' overall health and satisfaction with life, a compelling pattern emerged. Those who had navigated through hardships reported remarkably higher levels of mental well-being and contentment. It appears that facing adversity doesn't just test us, it fortifies us, enhancing our resilience and preparing us to tackle future challenges with greater adeptness. It's important to note, however, 
that being inundated with negative experiences can be detrimental. The key is balance. For many of us, achieving this balance means deliberately seeking out challenges and carving our own modern-day rites of passage. The author's pilgrimage to Alaska shone a light on this truth well before he even set foot in the wilderness. The mere act of preparing for the journey, breaking free from the monotony of everyday life, learning survival techniques and planning nutrition, sparked a significant mental shift. Immersing oneself in new skills and considerations acts as a powerful antidote to the mind-numbing effects of routine, clearing away the mental fog that accumulates from too much familiarity and comfort. Altering routines and acquiring new skills are effective strategies for mental rejuvenation, but the narrative doesn't end there. There's a more challenging yet incredibly rewarding avenue to explore. The embrace of boredom and solitude. This daunting proposition begs the question, are we ready to step into the silence, away from the constant buzz of stimulation, to uncover unparalleled clarity and strength? Part 3. Unlocking Serenity solitude, boredom, and nature's embrace. Imagine standing amidst the sprawling expanse of the Alaskan wilderness, utterly alone. Your voice could rise in a scream, or you could dance with reckless abandon, and there would be no witness. This profound isolation experienced by the author cuts through the constant noise of modern life, offering a taste of true solitude, a state increasingly rare in our always connected world. Despite the near-constant access to social interactions technology affords, a staggering 50% of people in the United States express feelings of loneliness, indicating an epidemic of isolation in the midst of perpetual connectivity. This paradox brings us to an essential insight. Embracing solitude, boredom, and the healing touch of nature can be a powerful antidote to the weariness of modern life. At first glance, seeking solitude to combat loneliness might seem counterintuitive. Yet, finding comfort in one's own company can significantly ease the discomfort of isolation, such as that felt during a pandemic lockdown. Beyond simply serving as an antidote to loneliness, solitude offers a myriad of benefits, including heightened creativity and deeper empathy toward others. Just as solitude has its merits, so does boredom. In today's digital age, the constant stimulation provided by our smartphones has rendered us nearly incapable of enduring moments of idleness without reaching for a screen. This incessant need for entertainment not only fosters mental exhaustion, but also stifles our creative faculties. In stark contrast, allowing ourselves to experience boredom, to truly sit with it without distraction, can ignite a wellspring of creative thought and innovation. To achieve a profound recharge of our mental batteries, we must disconnect from our electronic devices and immerse ourselves in the natural world. The benefits of spending time outdoors are well-documented and vast, ranging from the significant reduction in stress and anxiety afforded by Japanese forest bathing to the improvement in physical health observed even in individuals with chronic conditions. Natural settings offer a sanctuary from the pressures of daily life. But to fully tap into these benefits, one must venture beyond urban green spaces into the wild, where the restorative powers of nature are most potent. A study from UC Berkeley underscores this point, revealing that military veterans who engaged in a four-day wilderness rafting adventure experienced enduring benefits including a notable decrease in PTSD symptoms and stress levels. This sense of calm and contentment, fostered by time spent in nature, extended well beyond the duration of their trip. As we contemplate reconnecting with the tranquility of the natural world, it's crucial to also consider how such experiences can rejuvenate not just our minds, but our physical selves as well. Part 4. Understanding Hunger. Separating Needs from Wants. Navigating the maze of modern nutrition, where fad diets crowd the landscape offering quick fixes, is a challenge fraught with disappointment. Remarkably, research shows a mere 3% success rate in sustaining weight loss achieved through these diets. This low success rate isn't just about a lack of willpower, 
It's also tied to a common misunderstanding of our own eating habits. For example, a study from 1992 highlighted that individuals who estimated their daily intake to be around 1,000 calories were, in reality, consuming twice that amount. This brings us to a crucial revelation. To forge a healthier relationship with food, we must learn to differentiate between genuine hunger and mere cravings. Accepting that feeling hungry isn't inherently negative. Cravings are a natural part of the human experience, deeply rooted in our evolutionary past. When food was scarce, our ancestors needed to make the most of every opportunity to eat, storing excess energy for leaner times. This survival mechanism, while critical in the past, often leads us astray in the present, prompting us to eat out of boredom, stress, or habit rather than necessity. The essence of a sustainable approach to weight management is strikingly straightforward, yet challenging in practice. Eat less and tune into the body's actual nutritional needs. Resisting the urge to snack at the first sign of hunger, especially when driven by emotional needs rather than physiological, can prove transformative. Instead of succumbing to cravings when stressed, substituting a healthier habit, like taking a brisk walk, might reveal that the hunger was a mirage. Embracing short periods of fasting can also be beneficial, allowing the body to engage in autophagy, a cleanup process that breaks down and removes damaged cells. This process is vital for preventing diseases such as cancer and Alzheimer's, but is hindered by constant eating. The author's time in the Alaskan wilderness offered a practical lesson in understanding hunger. Far removed from the convenience of readily available food, he confronted the discomfort of hunger head-on. This experience not only deepened his appreciation for food, but also provided valuable insights into distinguishing between the body's genuine needs and the mind's fleeting desires. As we delve deeper into the necessity of respecting our hunger and recognizing it as a natural part of the human condition, the journey ahead proposes a pivot toward a different kind of exploration one that demands an inward voyage into the realms of self-understanding and acceptance. Part 5. Embracing Mortality, The Path to a Fulfilled Life There was a moment that changed everything for the author. It was an ordinary day, life humming along comfortably, when a podcast introduced him to the cosmic calendar, a visualization compressing the 14 billion years of the universe's existence into a single year. According to this scale, the entirety of human history flickers into existence in the last minute of December 31st. This realization struck the author with a profound sense of his own mortality and the fleeting nature of human life, injecting a sharp, uncomfortable awareness of the inevitability of death into his consciousness. Herein lies a vital insight. Contemplating death and our transient existence can be a catalyst for happiness and a life of deeper meaning. In Western culture, death is often met with denial and avoidance. We distract ourselves from the pain of loss, hurrying to move on, rather than confronting the raw reality of our finitude. Contrast this with the approach in Bhutan, nestled in the eastern Himalayas, where people are encouraged to reflect on death up to three times a day. In this kingdom, where Buddhist beliefs permeate daily life, Death is not hidden away, but integrated into the public sphere, symbolized by clay pyramids that contain the ashes of the departed. Here, death is not a feared end, but a natural, integral aspect of existence. Curiosity about Bhutan's reputation as one of the happiest places on earth led the author to explore how a culture so attuned to the presence of death could harbor such contentment. His journey revealed a profound truth. Acceptance of death and the impermanence of life can liberate us from fear, allowing us to live each moment more fully, gratefully, and mindfully. The metaphor of life as a journey towards a cliff edge serves as a powerful reminder. While we cannot avoid the destiny that awaits us all, we have a choice in how we approach it. Embracing our mortality, we can opt for a slow, scenic route, savoring the beauty and richness of life rather than dreading its conclusion. Adjusting our perspective on death is undoubtedly challenging, yet it opens the door to a more joyous and meaningful existence. To embark on this transformative path, 
It's not about ticking boxes or accumulating achievements, but nurturing an attitude of mindfulness and gratitude. By confronting the reality of our mortality, we can discover a deeper appreciation for the fragility and splendor of life, making the most of our journey to the cliff's edge. Part 6. Rediscover the joy of movement, the essential nature of exercise. During a relentless journey through the Alaskan wilderness, the author faced a daunting challenge that surpassed the act of hunting itself. Tasked with transporting a portion of a caribou he had successfully hunted, he found himself struggling under the weight of a 100-pound pack, trudging uphill. This ordeal, strikingly intense and grueling, became a revelatory experience, shedding light on the true capacity of the human body to endure and thrive under physical strain. This story brings us to a crucial understanding. For a life filled with happiness and health, engaging in physical activity is indispensable. Ideally, this exercise takes place in the great outdoors, involves social interaction, and includes the element of carrying weights. Consider how our lifestyles have diverged from those of our ancestors. In the past, daily survival required a high degree of physical activity that is virtually incomparable to today's standards. Hunters would embark on 25-mile journeys as a routine part of their existence, not a test of endurance, but a mere quest for sustenance. Modern living, however, sees us predominantly sedentary, a stark contrast from the rigorous, dynamic lifestyles of our predecessors. A staggering 27% of Americans report no physical activity whatsoever, an alarming statistic that underscores the profound disconnection between our evolutionary heritage and contemporary routines. Our bodies, designed for constant movement, flounder in the stasis of modern lifestyles. Moreover, the typical modern approach to exercise, solitary gym sessions focused on repetitive routines, falls short of engaging us in the way natural outdoor activities with a communal aspect can. Exercise, inherently cognitive, offers exponentially more benefits when it captures the full engagement of both mind and body. Evolution has shaped us to be natural foragers and burden carriers, moving constantly with purpose. Integrating weight-carrying exercises into our routines can invigorate our exercise regimen, tapping into this primal aspect of human nature. Activities such as rucking, a combination of hiking and weight-bearing akin to military training, offer a refreshing alternative to conventional fitness routines, combining physical exertion with the therapeutic qualities of nature and the camaraderie of group activities. In embracing forms of exercise that reconnect us with our fundamental human instincts, moving outdoors, engaging in communal activities, and integrating the challenge of carrying weights, we can recapture the joy and satisfaction inherent in physical activity, fostering not just physical wellness but profound mental and emotional well being. Part 7 A Journey Beyond Comfort Embracing New Perspectives and Experiences. Venturing into the unknown and questioning our deep-seated habits and beliefs can be a daunting endeavor. It's natural to cling to the familiar, to the practices and ideas that have shaped our understanding of the world. Take, for instance, our approach to hygiene. The ritual of hand-washing, long before the pandemic, has been ingrained in us as a cornerstone of health. Yet, this belief in the equation of hygiene with health is precisely the type of preconception that begs to be examined. Herein lies a pivotal message. To lead a richer, more profound life, we must dare to challenge our preconceptions and immerse ourselves in new experiences. The Hadza people of Tanzania offer a compelling counterpoint to the notion that frequent washing and sanitization are synonymous with better health. Living in conditions that defy Western standards of cleanliness, they seldom wash their hands or bodies, often using muddy puddles when they do. Despite their lack of conventional hygiene, the Hadzar exhibit remarkably robust health, with significantly lower incidences of gastrointestinal diseases and other afflictions that are increasingly common in more sanitized societies. This paradox prompts a reassessment of our obsession with cleanliness and its potential impact on our body's natural defenses. 
Beyond sanitation practices, there are other equally intriguing cultural habits that challenge Western norms and offer insights into health and well being. The sea women of Japan and Korea, for instance, dive into icy waters without the protection of wetsuits. Their lifestyle, characterized by regular exposure to cold, has been linked with a reduced likelihood of contracting colds, heart disease, and arthritis, suggesting the potential health benefits of embracing conditions we typically avoid. However, the pursuit of challenging preconceptions and seeking out novel experiences transcends mere physical well-being. It is about enriching the very fabric of our lives, broadening our understanding, and deepening our appreciation of the world around us. The author's own journey into the Alaskan wilderness became a transformative odyssey, yielding not only a newfound self-awareness, but also a rejuvenated zest for life. This narrative encourages us to view life as a scrapbook awaiting our contributions, a scrapbook that remains unmarked by the unique and vibrant experiences life has to offer, ultimately reflects a life unexplored. Whether it is a daring adventure, a physical challenge, or the simple act of stepping outside our comfort zones, each new experience adds a rich page to the story of our lives. In the end, the quest for a fulfilling and meaningful life may occasionally lead us through discomfort, but it is through these moments of unease and exploration that we uncover the full spectrum of what it means to truly live. Are you ready to start filling your pages? Final Summary At the core of these insights lies a simple yet profound realization. The abundant comforts of contemporary life, while easing physical strains, don't necessarily translate to personal fulfillment or happiness. It appears that the very elements we've eliminated from our lives in pursuit of ease, physical exertion, exposure to the elements, the acceptance of impermanence, might hold the keys to deeper satisfaction and well-being. Drawing lessons from our distant ancestors, who thrived on constant movement, face-to-face community interactions, and a profound connection with the natural world, suggests a pathway to enriching our modern existence. Our sedentary habits, reliance on technology for social connection, and avoidance of life's uncomfortable truths stand in stark contrast to the habits that once ensured our survival and contentment. To bridge this gap, embracing new experiences, especially those that challenge us physically and mentally, emerges as a compelling directive. Whether it's venturing into the wilderness, incorporating more natural movement into our daily routines, or simply allowing ourselves moments of solitude and reflection, each step outside our comfort zone can lead us closer to a harmonious state of mind and body. So, if the routines of modern life leave you longing for something more, Consider this an invitation to step into the unknown. Seek out challenges, embrace discomfort, and rediscover the joy of living fully engaged with the world around you. In the balance between ease and effort, comfort and challenge may lie the secret to a life well lived. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.